good morning good morning friends today uh, we will talk about the eye injuries the ocular trauma the ocular trauma okay the uh, what uh, what do we mean by ocular injury ocular injury can be from a fist which causes a blunt trauma it can be from a sharp object which causes a penetrating trauma a double penetration is known as a perforation we have to intervene in the ocular injury cases before obtaining the vision and the thorough ocular examination for the soft tissue around the eyeball has to be done we have to check for the like uh, canalicular and uh, canalicular integrity and the nasolacrimal duct integrity we have to always rule out the globe globe rupture and uh, the trauma may be interior or posterior and the high index of suspicion for the ruptured globe or the foreign body has to be maintained complete history or the nature of injury complete history from the patient has to be elicited and the nature of injury has to be uh, seen if whether it is a uh, grievous or uh, not and thorough and medical ocular examination has to be done including slit lamp examination and the fungus examination and we have to follow the dictum of doing first do no harm okay and the first topic in the eye injuries is the chemical burns chemical burns can be caused by alkali for example from the fresh mortar or the white wash alkali is a lipophilic and siphonifies the the membranes and thus it easily penetrates into the eyeball causing necrosis of the or uh, necrosis of the tissue and the fusion of the limbal uh, vasculature the immediate findings are the chemosis and conjunctivitis cornea is clear but denuded and can be seen uh, by the fluorescence and the late changes can that can be seen are the scha formation granulation and the corneal ulcer the eye shrinks and the leucoma is formed for the treatment of the alkali burns we have to irrigate with the normal saline for 30 minutes or till the ph returns to normal the particle of limes have to be removed under the local anesthesia with the forceps antibiotics topical antibiotics and cyclopelagics have to be prescribed corticosteroids are given for the first 10 days to prevent simblepharon to prevent simblepharon Acetazolamide, that is the that is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, has to be given to decrease the IOP if it is raised. Ascorbic acid has to be given as it is a rich antioxidant. The tetracyclines have to be given as it as they help in collagen formation. To inhibit collagen degradation, what all have to be given? Ten uh, percent sodium citrate, five percent N-acetyl cysteine, one percent methoxyprogesterone in the form of. Uh, in the form of uh, in the form of topical eye drops uh, formed from the injection that is in the fortified form and the glass rods uh, has to be sweeped around the eyeball and the eyelid between the eyeball and the eyelid to prevent the formation of the simblepharon contact lens soft contact lens can be used between the eyeball and the eyelids so that simblepharon does not uh, form if there is a a, a vascularity if there is a vascularity limbal stem cell transplant or amniotic membrane graft has can be done okay if it is a if the chemical injury is from the acid we don't have to worry as much as we have to worry from the alkali because the acids denature the proteins but they don't penetrate because they precipitate and coagulate the proteins and hence can't penetrate inside the eyeball but the still the treatment is the same as both stronger acids and alkalis stronger acids or alkalis will cause the same severity of the damage we use the hughes roper classification of the ocular chemical burns in which the chemical burns are graded into four grades in uh, based on the epithelial damage whether it is present stroma what is the stromal haze pre, uh, stromal haze present based on the perilimbal ischemia and hence these uh, the grades are used for the prog prognosis pro explaining the prognosis to the patient the corneal abrasion secondary to the thermal burn 
we have uh, when the patient presents with the corneal abrasion secondary to the thermal burn we have to evaluate the patient with the history in which there is a history of exposure to the welding or the sun lamps without the protective eyewear or the uv exposure can cause the snow blindness the symptoms can be moderate to severe ocular pain foreign body sensation red eye tearing from the eyes and the symptoms are worst within the 6 to 12 hours of exposure the critical sign of the thermal burns can be confluent epithelial defects in the interpalpebral distribution confluent epi defects in the interpalpebral distribution on the cornea which can be seen by the fluorescent staining how we uh, do the work up of this patient we have to evaluate for the history we have to do the slick lamp examination we have to rule out all the possible causes of the chemical burns and we have to treat this type of the patient with the cyclopelagics as the cyclopelagics help with the help to reduce the ciliary spasm we have to give the topical antibiotics and topical analgesics and uh, the optional pressure patch can pressure patching can be done which help in epi epithelial healing okay epithelial healing next after the chemical and the thermal burns we come to the mechanical injuries of the eye which can be an open globe or the closed globe open globe occurs when there is a full thickness laceration of the uh, cornea scleral coat of the eyeball and the object penetrates into the uh, inner structures of the eye and the closed globe injury can be closed globe which can be contusion or lamellar laceration or open globe which can be divided into full thickness laceration or a rupture laceration is further divided into penetrating perforating or an intraocular foreign body penetrating is one when when there is only the entry wound and perforating injury perforating laceration is the one in which both entry and the exit wound is present based on the blunt penetrating or perforating trauma various features can be seen in the structures of the eyeball like conjunctiva is abraded like in the conjunctiva abrasion is present in all blunt penetrating or perforating cornea is abraded or lacerated in blunt trauma while it is lacerated in penetrating or perforating trauma scleral laceration can be seen in all type of trauma anterior chamber high femur can be seen in all type of traumas and prolapse can be seen in penetrating or perforating trauma iris of pupil features there can be in irregular iris in the blunt trauma and prolapse of the iris can be seen in penetrating and perforating trauma same way in the lens traumatic cataract can develop in all the uh, three types of uh, injuries and lens prolapse can occur in penetrating and perforating trauma the vitreous hemorrhage also can occur in all the three type of injuries in the retina due to the blunt trauma commotion retina can be seen uh, and the retinal holes can develop or detachment can be there in the penetrating injury laceration of the retina can be there prolapse of retina can be there and retinal detachment can develop in the choroid in the blunt trauma choroidal rupture can occur or prolapse can occur but in the penetrating choroidal prolapse lacerations can occur next we go from outside to inside structure the periocular trauma the periocular trauma is the trauma around the eyeball the this can be uh, grouped into the soft tissue injuries which can be contusion avulsion puncture lacerations lacerations can be complex or simple deep or superficial or the bony injuries that is the fractures the lid injury the lids are the outermost the lids are the outermost protective mechanism the reflex closure the the reflex the reflex closure but before most injuries of the lids help to protect the eyeball the hence the laceration of the lids are the most common and the lid closure of which cranial nerve is responsible for lid closure it is the cranial nerve 7 that is the facial nerve the periorbital contusion hematoma if uh, there is a trauma there can be a contusion and hematoma formation around the eyeball which is uh, uh, known as raccoon eyes okay there is a periocular edema and hematoma uh, conjunctiva has chemosis there is a good vision of the patient the subcon hemorrhage can be present a, a mild process can be there intact extraocular movements are seen no palpable fractures or defects are felt around the eye uh, around the eyeball and you have to ask for the diagnosis just in case you are missing a fracture and the treatment for this is cold compresses and anti inflammatory meds
द प्रीसेप्टल फैट कंक्लूजन और लिड लेसरेशन वेन देर इज इंजरी द फैट कैन प्रोलैप्स इन टू द प्रीसेप्टल एरिया एंड दैट और देर इज द सब सब एपिथीलियल फैट इन द डर्मिस कैन प्रोलैप्स आउट Uh, which is known as lid laceration and the, we have what we have to consider in these cases whether the injury is at the lid margin or the or uh, the lid margin is non involved whether there is preceptal fat is prolapsing out whether we have to also rule out canalicular involvement whether there is open globe injury or not or globe rupture is present or not okay the non margin laceration if the laceration is non margin not involving the margin we have to do the thorough ocular exam and the primary repair of the lids and we have to give oral antibiotics and analgesics i lead margin laceration if there is a margin laceration we have to align the eyelid margin uh, we have to oppose it with the help of the scissors we have to need to move the tissue around we have to use many flaps and grafts depending on the how much how much is the tissue defect okay the next topic is ruptured globe that is a uh, that is caused by a the ruptured globe so you can see the rupture that is the corneoscleral laceration which can occur because of the blunt trauma due to the excessive pressure in the ruptured globe what we find is the significantly decreased visual acuity the patient has a complaints of sudden diminution of vision there is a shallow flat interior chamber because of the uh, aggression of the aqueous there is a altered size and position of the pupil the visible tracks can be seen through the lens or the vitreous tracing the line of the passage of the foreign body there is a marked conjunctival inflammation in the form of chemosis subconjunctival hemorrhage can be seen there is a total hyphema with the low pressure and the sedal pressure is uh, and the sedal test is positive we have to abide by the dictum of do no harm by avoiding applying pressure on the eye or avoiding any screening and this uh, ruptured globe may be due to any blunt trauma penetrating or perforating mechanism so we have to always know the history before uh, labeling it as a blunt injury or the sharp injury and the eye shield has to be given so that no pressure is there while uh, patching the eyeball Uh, as a treatment, we have to keep the patient uh, nil per oral as he arrives in the emergency room for the possible surgery later. We have to give the antibiotic coverage and the thickness prophylaxis. We have to consider antiemetic so that the excessive staining is avoided and the contents are not expelled from the eye. We have to do ancillary tests to rule out the ocular rupture with the scans. and uh, we have to arrange for immediate surgical repair if there is any delay in the surgical repair sympathetic ophthalmia may affect the other eye other eye which is not involved in the trauma and when do you remove the eye we have to consider the findings of no light perception by at least three consultants otherwise primary repair only has to be done in the uh, in cases of a ruptured globe we are uh, here is a flow chart showing the open globe management open globe injury management in which we have to expose the wound using traction suture and the peritomy as needed but we have to avoid putting pressure on the eye if there is no tissue prolapse we have to clean and suture the wound if there is iris prolapse we have to reposit if viable uh, if the iris is viable and non contaminated and we have to the free the tissue by the wound edge manipulation direct irrigation pharmacological manipulation and sweeping from behind if uh, iris is prolapsed ex we have to excise it if non viable and contaminated or epithelialized by minimizing the traction cut flush and eyeball surface if there is a choroid ciliary body and retina prolapse we have to reposit if it if at all it is possible and if the vitreous is prolapsed we have to excise that vitreous and preferably by vitrectomy probe and not by the scissors we have to use the vitrectomy probe for the cutting the prolapsed vitreous we have to put the rigid cover in the open globe injury so that the patient does not strain uh, so that there is no ac uh, much force under uh, this shield uh, otherwise uh, if we do the pressure patch there is a danger imminent danger of expulsion of the eye contents next we will uh, study in uh, the next video the conjunctival laceration with the corneal abrasions the next injury the conjunctival laceration with the corneal abrasions